So here we're going to go over the electrical conductivity of the heart and then move on to talk about the pressure volume diagram and Wigger's diagram. So starting off basic anatomy of the heart, you have the inferior and superior vena cava which are going to dump blood into the right atria. When the atria contract, it's going to push blood into the right ventricle. When the ventricle contracts, it's not shown here, but it's going to go into the pulmonary um, pulmonary trunk, go to the lungs, pick up oxygen, then it's going to be dumped into the left atria. When the left atrium contracts, it's going to push blood into the left ventricle, and then when the left ventricle contracts, it pushes blood up into the through the aortic valve into the aorta. So now that we've gone over basic anatomy, let's look at the electrical conductance areas. So up in the right atrium, we have the SA node. The SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. It's the fastest pace. It's the fastest autorhythmic um, cells that you're gonna find. Oh, and also it's important to note that. So you have two different types of cells in the heart. You have autorhythmic cells and you have contractile cells. The majority of the heart is made up of contractile cells, but these cells need to get some stimulation because they are not innervated by, um, by normal neurons that are going to stimulate it to contract. So in the SA node, in the AV node, in all of these places, we have autorhythmic cells. So the SA node, other autorhythmic cells have the fastest pace, so they're actually the ones that are going to create your heart rate. So you have the SA node, which is then going to send the signal to the AV node, and then it's going to send it down the bundle of His to the Purkinje fibers, which are going to spread up and cause contraction of the entire of the of both ventricles up so that the blood rushes up into the aorta and out throughout the body, or in the right side's case, up into the pulmonary circulation. Okay, now let's move on to talk about the pressure, pressure volume diagram. Now that we know about where these electrical conductances are going to be occurring, let's look at what you would see on an EKG. So P, Q, R, S, and then you're going to have a T wave. Okay, so P, Q, R, S, T. So the important ones here that we want to know is that at P, you're getting atrial depolarization. And as we know, we need the electrical signal to occur before we get the mechanical um, or the physical representation. So you're going to get depolarization and then right after depolarization, contraction. So your depolarization of the atria is occurring at P. And then from P to Q is when you get atrial contraction. Q, R, and S, this whole complex right here, is ventricular depolarization, and then from S to T, ventricular contraction, and then at T, repolarization of the ventricles. So let's go over that again. P, depolarization of the atria. P to Q, contraction of the atria. Q, R, S complex. Depolarization of the ventricles, S to T, contraction of the ventricles, T, repolarization of the ventricles. Okay, so here we're looking at the pressure volume diagram, and let's look at the segments first. So what's occurring from E to B? Well, we see that we have no change in pressure but we are changing volume. So along this segment, we're getting passive filling into the atria, and here the atria are going to contract and push the blood into the ventricles. From B to C, we see no change in volume, but we do have a change in pressure. We have an increase in pressure. This is what's called isovolumic contraction, 
where the ventricles are building up enough pressure to be able to close the AV valve and open the aortic valve to push blood into the system, but they are not getting any more blood. They are not changing the volume. From C to D, you have the ejection of blood, so you built up enough pressure that when you get to C, you're able to push open the aortic valve and shove the blood out into the aorta. From D to A, we see no change in volume again, but we have a decrease in pressure. This is isovolumic relaxation. Now why is isovolumic relaxation necessary? Because we know that, pre that blood is going to flow from a higher pressure to a lower pressure, we need to get the ventricle to go down in pressure so that the atria is able, because right now it's filling with blood, while the ventricle is contracting, the atria is relaxing and is passively filling with blood again. While it, when it has a higher pressure than the ventricle, the blood will flow back into the ventricle. If you never get this relaxation and stay up here at this higher pressure, the blood will not be able to flow into the ventricle and um, pumping blood to the rest of your body will seize. So, okay, so now let's look at what's happening at each of these specific spots. So if we have the atria passively filling and contracting, which valve would be opening or closing right at A? The AV valve would have to be opening and so you're building up, um, you're passively filling in blood until you have enough. They're able to create some pressure and push it through the valve into the ventricle. At this point, you now have the blood pushed into the ventricle and the AV valve closes. From here, we have isovolumic contraction where we're building up enough pressure to open the aortic valve. Once the aortic valve is open, the blood is going to be ejected into the aorta, and at D, we're going to close the aorta, the aortic valve. So now the aortic valve is closed, and you have to go through isovolumic relaxation to bring the pressure in the ventricle lower than that of the atria, and we're back to where we started. Open the AV valve, push the blood into the ventricle, Close the AV valve, isovolumic contraction, open the AV valve, or open the aortic valve, ejection of blood into the aorta, close the aortic valve, isovolumic relaxation.